you are supported 100% of the time, but you must know what you want and you must take deliberate action. Hey, social media, it's Stephen Middleton coming to you live from the Possibility Action Network located in Lancaster, South Carolina. Our mantra is, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Today, I want to share with you on the theme, Be Strong and of a Good Courage. Now, some of you may recognize that, that that theme comes from the book of Joshua in the Christian Bible. So I want to make a disclaimer to you today. Firstly, I am not a theologian, and I am not a minister, and have no aspirations of becoming one. But I feel inspired to share on this topic, be strong and of a good Courage. Now, first, an advertisement. The Possibility Action Network is seeking to partner with professionals and business-minded individuals who are willing to take a look at a category creator opportunity and a product that's highly regarded as a breakthrough in our time. If you're interested in looking at this opportunity, send me a Facebook request and then a private message with your, with your contact information and I will reach out to you. If you're hearing my voice and you know of anyone who fits into those categories, professional, business-minded, please send my information on to them. Now, today I want to remind myself and hopefully remind you that we are supported 100% of the time. Now, I've made a few notes because I want to make sure that I share with you this as it occurs in my mind. Now, we know that we are supported in many ways. For example, we know that, you know, we are given our breaths. We don't have to fight for oxygen if we are a relatively healthy human being. You know, the breath is just there. In fact, we take it for granted that when we wake up in the morning, that our breaths continue. When we, when we go to sleep at night, even though we are unconscious, we expect our breaths to continue. I looked up the number of times we breathe in an average life, and this is what I found that an 80-year-old person, a person who lives to be around 80 years of age, will take on average about 700 million breaths during his or her lifetime. Something that's just given to us on a daily basis, 24-7, every day, every hour of the day. A second is our heartbeat. You know, we never think about our heart beating, but we know that our heart continues to beat whether we are asleep or awake and there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do to stop it, of course, unless we just expire and none of us are eager to do this. I looked it up. I wondered how many times the heart beats in the average, uh, average, on average in the life of an individual. And I found that the average person who lives a normal life can expect his or her heart to beat three billion times. And this is nothing that we have to do to make that happen. Now we can do things to make our heart work more efficiently, but we can count on our heart beating for as long as we are on the planet. I also consider digestion. Have you ever wondered how you digest the foods that you consume? I checked it out. And I found that whatever we put into our mouths actually digests in our large intestine, small intestine, every 36 hours. At least it should go through our system every 36 hours completely. And of course, many uh, health uh, thinkers believe that we should be eliminated on a daily basis. If you're not, then we're not doing something right. So we are supported in that area. But we don't have to look at anything as dramatic as 
our heartbeat, our breaths, or our digestion of foods. Just consider your life. You know that you have been supported your entire life from the moment you came on the planet. The job that you have, the jobs that you've had over your career, you know that you've been supported. Your education, be it high school, trade school, college, and beyond, you know that you've been supported. The resources that you have that's available to you, your money supply, you know that you are supported every day in your life. Now you may ask, well, who is my supporter? Now I want you to bear with me now because I'm not talking about any specific faiths, so be open-minded here. Some of you will say to me, Allah is my supporter. Others would say, God is my supporter, if you're from that culture. Someone else might say, Jehovah is my supporter. Another person would, may put it this way, Jesus the Christ is my supporter. And then there are others who may say, the absolute is my supporter. But whoever you look to, you know that you have been supported and that you are supported every day of your life. And I want to persuade you to recognize and persuade myself actually to recognize that I'm always supported. So then I went to various faith texts to see what these faith texts say about being, being supported. I want to see what they said. On oh, my theme, be strong and of a good courage. And here is what the Torah said. And I'm not going to quote exact verse and chapter because it's mentioned in various places in the Torah. The Torah says, fear not neither be discouraged. In the Quran, at various places in that faith text, it says, have no fear. In the sacred text of Seventh Day, Seventh Day Adventist, it says, do not fear, nor be afraid of them. And of course, as I've said, in the Christian Bible, in the book of Joshua and elsewhere, by the way, in the Bible, it says, be strong and of a good courage. Now, why do these faith texts make this proclamation? What it's saying to us is that we are supported. We are always supported 100% of the time. Now, Let's evaluate the experiences of Joshua. And once again, I want to remind you that I am not a minister. So I'm not approaching this as if I am a minister of the gospel. I am not a theologian, and I am not approaching this as if I am a theologian. But what occurs to me is that we are supported. And the experiences of Joshua reminds us of that. Now, I want you to recall that Joshua was given the promise of God. And not only Joshua, the people that he was leading were given the promise of God. And this promise was being fulfilled in the experiences of Joshua, in the experiences of the people at that time. And the scripture says that the uh, that the Creator told Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Uh, Moses is no longer on the scene, Joshua, but the promise that I had given Moses is the same promise that I am giving unto you. It is a gift. You're going to have it. But then the scripture says that God told Joshua, but I want you to be strong, and I want you to be of a good courage, and the scripture says that God also told Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with thee or with you, Joshua. I will not fail you, nor will I forsake you. That's a promise about being supported. And Joshua received that promise, just as Moses received that promise. Now notice, Joshua and the people he was leading would be given a gift. The gift was theirs. And they were promised that the Creator would not fail them, would not forsake them. But notice now, Joshua had to take 
deliberate action. He could not sit in a chair and say, okay, the promise has been given to me, give it to me. Joshua had to cross the Jordan River. This is why he received the, the encouragement, be strong and of a good courage. He had to take the action. They had to take the action of, of crossing the Jordan River. In fact, the scriptures, if you look back in Genesis, they also, or actually Exodus, they had also faced the Red Sea. And they had to take the action of crossing the Red Sea. So you may be given a promise, but the action has to be taken as well. You have to take deliberate action. And then Joshua was given another promise, another act that he had to carry out. He had to go into the land. He had to move into the land. Now, into the land, there were many dangers. I'm not going to probe that with you today. But just know that there were many obstacles that he would face. But he received the promise, be of a good courage and fear not. Now, we stand as Joshua. We have, all humans, no matter where you are on the planet, have been given certain promises. And we experience many of them. As I said, each breath we take is a promise. You know, each beat of our heart is a promise. The foods that we digest is a reflection of the promise. Our job, our education, our resources all are a reflection of the promise. But we must possess them. We stand as Joshua. But it's vital, though, that we know what we want. See, Joshua wasn't confused about what he wanted. He wants to go into that land where there was milk and honey. He wanted to possess that land. He knew what he wanted. So I ask myself on a daily basis, what is that? What is it that you want? Gosh, I remember coming out of cross. I'm not going to get into this with you, but I tell you what, I wanted an education. I know I could taste it. I mean, I didn't know how I was going to get it, but I knew that I wanted it. And that want was my gift. Your want, I want to assure you, is your gift from whomever you consider to be the creator. You get to want what you want. It's nobody's business what you want because the want has been planted in your heart, but you have to possess the land. I have to possess the land. We stand as Joshua and your promise is reflected in your want. Now, secondly, like Joshua, we must possess the land. We are supported 100% of the time, but we must take those action steps. I was talking to someone recently, and they said to me, well, Stephen, you know, you talk about being supported. You talk about possibilities. What about COVID-19? I reflected for just a moment, and what occurred to me is that COVID-19 is actually showing us how we are being supported every day of our lives. In fact, we know more now because of COVID than we did before COVID. Now, for example, before COVID, I was aware that, you know, the president of the United States could be in Air Force One and conduct business, the affairs of the United States, as if he was in the Oval Office. I know that before COVID-19, that the president could be in the, Oval, in the conference room in the Oval Office and some of his policymakers could be thousands of miles away and beam into the, to the conference room via video. I was aware of that before COVID. I also know that the physician, Dr. Benjamin Carson, helped physicians in other parts of the world perform complicated surgery by, by way of video before COVID. But here's how we are supported because of COVID. Here's what we know now. We know that a graduate student at Harvard University could tutor students in Florida right now, every day of the week. We know that students who study science, chemistry, physics, biology, could study at, at Stanford University and tutor students in Mississippi. We know that now because of COVID, because we're all on videos. I know now that students can be mentored by retired college professors and some of them who are currently engaged in their work with tutor students. I'm a retired college professor and I know that I can teach 
any students, social studies and history, no matter where they are in the world. I know that I can teach them to write a competent essays no matter where they were in the world. I know of a retired school teacher, a public school teacher, who, who can teach any student how to read skillfully no matter where they are in the world. COVID has taught us that. We can help students score well on standardized tests. We can help students do better on the ACT and SAT. We can help students do better on the LSAT and other standardized tests. There's, no, there's nothing that's impossible to us. And that's what COVID-19 has taught us. So I want to come back to you now. The Possibility Action Network is committed to all of us embracing this philosophy of I am. When we declare I am, we are declaring that we are in sync with whomever we believe to be the ruler of the, you, of the universe. I don't have to dispute you about who you believe in, but I know you are supported. The Possibility Action Network, our second mantra is I can. We want to stir up your gifts in you, to give you the confidence of your ability to reach your goal. And our third mantra is I will, that we're willing to take the action, that we're willing to keep on marching until our day comes. The Possibility Action Network believes that a thousand possibility thinkers around the world can initiate amazing changes. And this is why I'm eager to connect with you, no matter where you are in the world. This is Stephen Middleton. I am from the Possibility Action Network, reminding you today that I am Possibility Man. Until next time.